Hello students. We shall continue the concept of regeneration in the embryology part. The next concept after the understanding the definition types with examples of regeneration is a regeneration in planaria. It includes the first subtopic of child's axial gradient theory or metabolic theory. Here, the term gradient simply refers to a slope slanting downward from its peak. When you look at a mountain, from its peak, the slope that moves down, we call it as downward stream or slanting. So this we call it is generally gradient. Axial gradient means gradient that follows along a main axis of the body um, that is anterior posterior axis as what we find in planaria. I repeat axial gradient means the gradient that follows with the axis the main axis. The axis here is the anterior posterior polarity. So axial gradient uh, here refers to anterior posterior polarity of the body of organism. The freshwater planarians show high power of regeneration. It acts as a type of asexual reproduction in planaria. When the body of planaria is cut into three pieces, such as a head piece, a middle piece, and a tail piece, each of the piece of the body can grow into a new or a complete organism, <coughs> excuse me, organism as what you see in the diagram down here. So, the process of regeneration is a very complex phenomenon with two major events that takes place. Number one is growth of new tissues and number two is differentiation of parts in the damaged or amputed region. The process also involves wound healing stage with the help of a blastema formation. There occurs the process of morphogenesis. So we have understood already in the previous session. The first thing is wound healing process. The second stage is blastema differentiating to form the uh, morphogenesis uh, process uh, that uh, further uh, uh, involves with the development of uh, regeneration of the last part. So the regeneration of a new organ at the damaged part is seen during the process of morphogenesis. So during the morphogenesis, there occurs 
two major processes. Number one, induction. The term induce refers to the triggering of the cells to form or regenerate the organ there. Whereas the second step called is inhibition where there is stoppage of or blockage of the morphogenesis process takes place. So why is successive or repeated in induction and inhibition process should happen. Uh, it is to form the uh, uh, regeneration of the last part of the amputated region. Students here, induction will trigger the process of regeneration. Inhibition process is repeated successively with the induction because there will not be repetition of or duplication of the regenerated part. So the duplication of the regenerated part will be stopped by the inhibition process and triggering of the formation of uh, a uh, last part will be done by the induction process. So induction, inhibition, both the process success, uh, successively uh, repeats during the process of morphogenesis. So this is the importance of uh, the process of regeneration. Well, scientists have noticed that the anterior head part in planaria forming the brain structure first is from the blastema or the regeneration bud. This step induces the differentiation of the rest of the parts of the head region such as the eyes, the head structures like auricles, then followed by pharyngeal region, um, indicating that the head formation is first followed by the pharyngeal uh, region. So head region will have the dominance uh, to control the uh, regeneration of the rest of the parts of the uh, body of planaria. During this stage of uh, regeneration, Induction of new region and prevention of the repeated uh, parts of the amputated part both occurs successively and it occurs parallelly. Otherwise, many duplications of last parts can be regenerated in the same organism. So, uh, induction process and inhibition process both are important which are, uh, acts parallelly in order to have the process of morphogenesis or regeneration. So, down is the picture which represents the same process. Otherwise, it can form more than one head, more than uh, 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 one tail part, but it is not so. Only one part of the uh, head piece, one part of the uh, uh, tail piece gets formed here. The reason is that the inhibition and the induction both successively or uh, uh, um, uh, repeats su uh, uh, successively are parallelly in the organism. The process of regeneration is a tremendous process in planaria. Each cut part can develop into a complete and a normal organism. If you cut a planaria all along the anteroposterior axis, 
into two or three parts. Each of the part can develop a new um, organism through the process of regeneration. And if we could um, cut or slit the anterior head part into three pieces, only head part, if I slit into three pieces, each of the pieces can develop into a new head part, a complete head part. So this results uh, uh, in a planaria with three heads, as what you see in the diagram down. It is an abnormal feature and is called as heteromorphic condition. Hetero means different, morpho means appearance. This name is suggested for a planaria with three heads or more than one head. It is a different form from the usual form of planaria, which will have only one head. So the condition is called heteromorphic condition. So if you could have the anterior part slit into more than one piece, each of the part can develop into a complete head, having a single planaria showing many heads on it, which we call this heteromorphic condition. The cut middle piece of planaria always forms or regenerate a head at anterior side first and a tail at its posterior end will be followed later. That is, it maintains a linear polarity towards anterior posterior axis. Students, you will have to concentrate a concept here. When I cut the planaria into three pieces, as what you see the diagram down here, of the three pieces, the head formation process will take place first and then follows the rest of the parts. So this concept of regeneration, where it is dependent on the polarity of anterior-posterior axis, is explained by Charles Manning Child in 1911. Uh, in the form of a, a very popular theory, we call it as axial gradient theory, which is also called as metabolic gradient theory. So down in the picture, when you look at the concept of axial gradient theory indicates that the power of regeneration is faster to form the head region, then follows the middle piece, then follows the tail piece region. So power of regeneration is high for the head piece. The theory of axial gradient or metabolic gradient uh, of regeneration process in planaria is graded process all along the axis of anterior posterior along with its uh, physiological processes. This anteroposterior axis gradient is responsible for coordinating the process of uh, regeneration development. In simple students, remember here the grade of 
regeneration process when you look at it is higher towards anterior side as it moves down towards posterior side the power of regeneration slowly decreases so where do we have the highest power of regeneration is it is for the anterior most part of the body that is the head region so that's what the concept of uh, anterior uh, posterior axis uh, 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 related regeneration is of which we call it as axial gradient theory or metabolic gradient theory metabolic gradient theory because even the metabolism uh, seems to be highest at the head region as it moves towards the posterior region the uh, um, the process of metabolism tends to reduce so this is the concept that is related to axial gradient theory given by child child also suggested that both the polarity as well as the symmetry were already present and decided in the embryonic development process itself that is during the process of differentiation and specialization the polarity and symmetry of the body is fixed and it is retained this polarity will remain unchanged throughout the lifetime of planaria so this is an important uh, a point to be remembered so the polarity is decided at the embryonic developmental stage itself and that polarity is remaining within the organism till it dies okay so it remains for, throughout the lifetime so he also correlated the concept of a polarity gradient with the rate of metabolism all along the anterior posterior axis so down in the picture when you look at we do have <coughs> excuse me we do have the process of regeneration as well as metabolism both highest at the region of anterior as it moves down towards the posterior side along the axis of anterior posterior polarity the rate of regeneration as well as the uh, symmetry and the metabolism tend to decrease so highest is seen for the anterior side least is seen for the posterior end of the axis <coughs> excuse me child also found that the anterior polarity we call it as apical polarity exhibits the greatest power of regeneration as it shows the highest level of metabolic activity than the posterior end because it shows the lowest activity so the concept of regeneration when we look at it is correlated with symmetry as well as the metabolism all these three concepts is highest at anterior side and least towards the posterior side as it moves down there is a decrease in this uh, phenomenon <coughs> the power it otherwise means metabolic activity of organism is not uniform or in all the parts of the body it is highest at the head region gradually decreases towards the posterior tail part it is due to the highest metabolic activity at the head or anterior part so the regeneration is also highest at anterior head part then at posterior end due to less metabolic activity you find the regeneration seem to be very low or slow so that's what the picture down also represents so as the gradual decrease in the metabolic activity from anterior to the posterior end all along the 
axis of anterior posterior axis. The power of regeneration will decrease along the anterior posterior axis, which is hence called as axial or metabolic gradient process. Students remember gradient as we have understood, it is sloping downward. So from peak to the base, there is a sloping, which we call it as gradient. So, axial gradient is gradient related to the axis of anterior posterior polarity. So, that is what happens with the regeneration in planaria also. So, the axial gradient regeneration power is demonstrated by many methods and two popularly known methods are number one amount of carbon dioxide given off by the organism at different parts of anterior posterior axis simultaneously oxygen consumed by the same parts is uh, observed it is observed that the result of the observation is that the process of carbon dioxide release as well as the oxygen consumption, both are highest at the anterior most head part than the posterior end, indicating that metabolic activity is highest at the head region. The second is exposure of planaria to the toxins, the poisonous substances. Students, when a planaria is immersed in a concentrated solution of a poison, generally barium chloride, the animal dies. Remember here, all tissues when the animal dies do not die at the same time. What happens then? As the head shows highest metabolism, it becomes more susceptible to the effect of these poisons. So, this variety of poisons will be uh, uh, acting upon the most metabolic uh, uh, active region that is the head region. So, poison effect is more on the head part. So, head part gets killed first. Then follows to the middle region, then to the posterior region. The last part to die is the posterior tail part. So that's what the picture down represents. You can find the, sh the shape for the head region of planaria gets disturbed or it is disrupted by the uh, 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 poisons that they get exposed to. So this follows the other region or downward uh, at posterior end, I mean to say the Poison will kill the head part first, then the middle part, then the tail part at the end. So, towards the anterior posterior grading, uh, gradient of the axis, there is slow death of the organ part of the body in planaria takes place. Highest or faster death of the part of the body is seen for the head compared to the tail. Similarly, the effect remains the same with the exposure to the ultraviolet radiations also because they are also the poisonous uh, rays for the uh, planaria. So, all these scientific experiments proves that gradient of metabolism and susceptibility to the poison or simply the poison effect are parallel. They are simultaneous, they are successive. The anterior head part is more susceptible to the poison and shows greatest metabolic activity. So, both are correlated parallelly to the recovery rate also. 
In simple, the head region or the anterior region shows greatest capacity of regeneration where the metabolic rate is also high or highest. They reduce towards the posterior end gradually. So this is the importance of axial gradient theory of child. In the picture down when you look at, you find a wound healing epidermis, below that is the blastema. But remember, at the region of the head formation down, you doesn't find the head formation actually. So why it is not getting formed? It is because the power to become the head structure is last due to some factors within, some disturbance factors within. So, highest active metabolic activity is for the head region towards the posterior uh, side. The metabolic activity and the power of regeneration and the symmetry slowly starts decreasing. It is to be noted that regeneration in planaria is not perfect always. When a sexually mature planaria is cut across between the pharynx and copulatory apparatus, that is reproductive parts. So pharynx part and the reproductive parts region we are going to cut for a sexually mature planaria, the adult planaria. The two halves fail to regenerate, I mean to say both the parts will fail to regenerate the reproductive structures such as the sex organs. But each part will regenerate to form the a complete organism. But the sex organs or reproductive organs will not be formed in them. So this indicates that the regeneration in planaria, the adult planaria, is not always perfect. Otherwise, it should have formed the sex uh, organs also within them. So, there is some factors behind this change that we can understand in the concept of genes related to the process of regeneration. So the factors responsible for the changes that happens within the regeneration process is related to the genes. Well, the next concept is genetics of regeneration in planaria showing regeneration variation excuse me, all along the anteroposterior axis of polarity. It is otherwise known as stem cell mediated polarity in planaria. As we know, <coughs> the stimulus of regeneration is the injury that occurs in the organism or amputation, or a tissue loss, or a damage that is created. The first step of regeneration is wound healing, as we have described earlier. That is, a strong muscular contraction occurs at the site of wound or damage. So within the fractions of seconds of time, it takes place. So the muscles will get contract at the cut end region. This will minimize the surface area for the wound so that energy spent on wound healing uh, process gets reduced. The next process is the involvement of specialized planarian cells called as rhabditic cells that starts releasing their contents or proteins near the wound site 
So rhabdoidic cells will throw away their content into the wound site. This mucosal proteins will form a protected cover on the wound to reduce or stop immunological or bacterial infections. <coughs> this is what you uh, 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 find as an explanatory slide down in the picture. It was Thomas Hunt Morgan in 1890s who also explained the axial gradient variation of regeneration along the anterior posterior axis. Students remember it is not only child Manning, it is also T. H. Morgan. Both have explained the concept of axial gradient theory. So he calls, Morgan calls, the process of regeneration as morphogenetic gradient. There, um, child calls it as a metabolic gradient. But Morgan calls here the process of regeneration as morphogenetic gradient because the anterior head gets formed first followed by the tail uh, during the regeneration along the anterior posterior axis. So experiments were conducted on it to show that the most active part of the planarial uh, regeneration is the head part on the anterior posterior axis. Morgan also cut planaria in two, two pieces as head piece and a tail piece. The head piece will form or regenerate its tail part <coughs> and the tail part will, a tail piece will regenerate its uh, head part undoubtedly. But the rate of regeneration of these two parts when we look at, it varies, it differs. The tail part develops the head anteriorly first. So head formation will be triggered first. Then the head part will develop the tail uh, uh, posteriorly. Um, the concept of experiments conducted by them remains same. With that of the metabolic activities described by child. What makes this planarians to have this high power of regeneration? Um, the formation of the brain, formation of the reproductive structures after the process of damage. Scientists have worked on it to know there are variety of genes and their products acting as the signaling molecules are simply called as paracrine factors. They are related to the adult stem cells in planarians. I repeat students, for the process of regeneration, there are special kind of cells present in the adult organisms of planaria. When the uh, planaria is cut into pieces, these cell mass will involve in the actual uh, um, process of regeneration. So, these cell mass are provided with the genes, those genes will form the proteins and those proteins will act as signaling molecules or paracrine uh, factors that will trigger the process of regeneration. It is revealed that during the embryonic patterning, <clears throat> the genes responsible for the formation of an embryo are called as stem cells <coughs> and these stem cells will remain in their state of division without undergoing maturation or differentiation till the planaria dies. So these stem cells are hence called as adult stem cells. I repeat 
adult stem cells because the stem cells are present in the adults. They are originated from their embryonic state itself. So they instruct the process of regeneration during the damage or after the damage. So they are the cells that help the damaged part against the infection of bacteria and resist the bacterial infections also. So, we now know that <coughs> excuse me, some adult stem cells are there for the process of regeneration to occur in planaria along anteroposterior axis. They are responsible for resisting the bacterial infections. Just now we have understood. And there are certain of genes scientists have studied called MON2 genes related to phagocytosis and resistance to the bacterial infection. So down in the picture, uh, you can find in the slide where um, uh, um, the resistance for the bacterial infection is brought about by MON2 genes, by bringing in the gene silencing process. Okay, so gene uh, uh, function is studied by gene silencing process also. Regeneration is dependent on the adult stem cells that have totipotent condition. Totem means total potent refers to potentiality or ability to form any type of cells. These cells are collectively called as neoblasts. Students remember neo means new. Blast means dividing cells or formative cells. They are these cells <coughs> which are also called as, excuse me, clonogenic neoblasts. Clonogenic means mass of similar cells. It was uh, Wagner and his co workers in 2011 found that neoblasts or adult stem cells responsible for the process of regeneration. Later it was uh, Ulfswinkel and his co-workers identified that there are classes of neoblasts. Neoblasts are not same, there are classes. They, are, they named these neoblasts classes as zeta neoblasts and sigma neoblasts. So two classes. Zeta neoblasts are responsible for the triggering of wound healing process. We know that uh, epidermal cover is seen at the region of uh, amputation. So that is triggered by zeta neoblasts. They also found that there are controlling genes for the process of epidermis formation called PROG1 gene, that is PROGRESS gene 1, that triggers the process of epidermis formation. That's what you find in the uh, picture down. Whereas the sigma neoblasts, help in the regeneration of damaged parts in a sequential manner. That is, sigma neoblast proliferates or develops into nerve cells, eye cells, brain cells, muscle cells, intestinal cells, flame cells, etc. <coughs> so these are all the adult uh, differentiated cells. So they are all developed from the sigma neoblast. Students remember, Zeta neoblast cells are responsible for the formation of epidermis that will trigger the wound healing. Whereas sigma neoblast, the second group of 
uh, neoblast cells are actually responsible for the form, uh, formation of the adult differentiated cells such as the list that is given as um, nerves, eyes, muscles, intestine, flame cells, etc. So, these sigma cells or the adult stem cells have nearly 6000 inductive genes that coordinate the process of regeneration. I repeat, the sigma cells will have around 6000 number of genes that will induce the process of regeneration in them. Few important genes are WNT genes, beta catenin genes, notum genes, ERK genes, etc. Few important uh, genes responsible for the formation of head region is notum genes that will activate the head region at anterior uh, uh, part and ERG genes are responsible for the formation of auricles of the head. So when you look at the picture here, these genes namely notum genes and ERG genes both are responsible for the formation of the head as well as the auricles respectively in planaria. Whereas the rest of genes like WNT genes and uh, beta catenin genes, they both together work to form the tail at the posterior end. So an interesting feature here is that notum genes and uh, erg genes are responsible for the formation of head region. WNT genes and beta catenin genes are responsible for the formation of posterior region. If so, we know that in the axial gradient concept, highest power of regeneration is seen for the uh, head region compared to the tail part. But there are genes responsible. Head region formation is under the control of Nortim as well as ERG genes. Tail region is under control of WNT triggers and beta catenin genes. So the activity of Nortim genes, activity of uh, WNT genes and beta catenin genes, they both show antagonistic features. Students, when we say antagonistic feature, it otherwise refers that they show opposite uh, uh, working styles. So there are many genetic techniques uh, used to study these gene functions in the adult organisms during the process of regeneration. Few to name are RNA interference, simply referred as RNAi, and uh, in situ hybridization technique, etc. The RNA of a definite gene gets blocked by using RNA interference or complementary RNA strand. So, RNA strand is generally a single stranded. Uh, structure. It will have one more com uh, complementary strand which we call it as RNAi. So when these two comes together, the RNA, the original RNA of mRNA type generally will be stopped or blocked from its further functions by the complementary strand which we call it as RNA interference. In in-situ hybridization also not only for the RNA, but for the DNA, we will have a complementary strand. Okay, that will show further uh, uh, complementation. That uh, 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 further shows hybridization process, so that the DNA activeness will be blocked there. So. 
the concept of RNAi and the concept of hybridization technique are responsible for understanding the function of the genes, those 6000 genes. And it clearly indicates that WNT genes and beta catenine genes are responsible for the formation of tail. Whereas, Notum genes and ERG genes are responsible for the formation of head region in the adults. Well, students, Notum and ERG genes, wherever they are, they induce the head formation. Similarly, wherever are WNT and beta catenin genes, they form the tail region. That's what the picture down explains about. So, if a wound is created, the wound, if it needs to form the head region, there is requirement of notum genes and erg genes. If there is requirement of the tail formation, WNT and catenin genes are there. Um, beta catenin genes are responsible. If it is the middle part responsible for the formation of both the head and the tail region, then there is requirement of all the genes. Notum and erg genes at the anterior region to become the head part and um, not, um, sorry, WNT gene and beta catenin genes at posterior side, it forms the tail region. Say suppose, if we disturb the gene part and their position. If I transplant notum genes from anterior to the posterior side, then the posterior side will form the head region. Are you able to follow? So this is how the importance of notum and ERK proteins and genes responsible for the head region WNT and beta catenin genes responsible for the tail formation. To understand the process of gene activation at anterior and posterior side in a very better way, we transplant notum and uh, notum genes the head forming genes otherwise to the posterior side and it form head region originally seen at anterior region. Since we have transplanted notum genes to the posterior location, there is also formation of one more head. So, you find a single plan area showing at the anterior side one head, posterior side another head. So, two ends will have head structures. So, resulting plan area will be having two heads. Same with the WNT and beta catenin genes also. If I transplant WNT genes and beta catenin genes to the posterior side, then you find both the ends tail structures that gets formed at anterior and posterior side, no head formation because WNT genes are responsible for the head formation, I'm sorry, tail formation. So that's how uh, uh, that's the importance of uh, um, the transplantation of the genes responsible for deciding the anterior and posterior. Uh, axis in the regeneration process of plan area. There are also special hedgehog genes or proteins in the nerve cells of the brain. These proteins will accumulate at the posterior side of the cut end part that induces tail formation along with 
WNT and beta catenin genes. So we are just naming the major genes, but we have around 6,000 genes, remember this. So polarity of regeneration is dependent on the activity of the neoblasts and the corresponding genes at the location. So you find the transplantation experiment uh, conducted by the uh, scientists. And the pictures represents their work. Well, students, the next concept of your syllabus is dominance of head in the process of regeneration. This is again a concept that is repeated and what we have studied already in the polarity concept of regeneration which is a type of uh, asexual reproduction in planaria. If you cut the planaria into three pieces or many pieces, each part will develop into a new and complete organism, no doubt. So that's what you find, uh, I mean, represent in the diagram down. We know each of the part can develop into a newer organism. Hardly it will take 14 days of time. Regeneration in planaria predominantly occurs by reorganizing or remodeling or repatterning of existing tissues at the damaged parts or the injured, uh, injured parts. There are 20 to 30 percent of tissue remains as adult stem cells in the body of planaria. They are collectively called as neoblasts or clonogenic neoblasts. They help in the regeneration of adult cells like nerve cells, flame cells, reproductive cells, etc. And these adult stem cells have the property of unspecialized division, multipotent division, or they are the cells which are called as uh, omnipotent cells also. Regeneration, as we know, it can occur both at anterior side and posterior side. It is a hence bidirectional uh, process that help in the regeneration of um, the body parts that are damaged. So during the injury, the cells will migrate to the site of the injury to form the blastema. So what cells will migrate there? This neoblast to form the blastema. This blastema will now buds off to generate the last part through the process of morphogenesis. This we have learned in the uh, first uh, uh, session of the class. So during the formation of a new part or the damaged part, inhibition of duplicated parts and induction of last parts need to be uh, seen parallelly. So this also we have learned little earlier. In the process of regeneration, the head formation takes the place of number one, then follows the tail formation. It is due to the highest metabolism of the head region. And it is found that head of planaria exhibits the dominance of regeneration over the rest part of the body. To support this statement that head has got dominance power of regeneration. 
If we transplant the head part to the posterior end, it forms again the head region. We studied that the planaria with the anterior head and another head at posterior region with two heads at two ends. An interesting fact here is that at the posterior end, as it forms the head, it will induce the neighboring tissue of the location will be forced to become the pharyngeal region or the pharynx region, where at posterior side, anterior side no doubt it gets formed, but at posterior side we have shifted, I mean we have transplanted few of the cells from the anterior head region. So there the head gets formed even at posterior side. So two heads are formed. But at posterior side down, the head will induce one more pharyngeal region to get formed. So that's what you see in the picture down. In the initial growth stage, that is when the planaria is in, its body remains short so the head part will influence the complete body along the axis of anterior posterior, posterior side. So as the organism grows older, the posterior region becomes um, far away situated and hence it will influence The head at posterior region or the influence of the head at posterior region will become very less or very negligible. So when the organism is growing, <coughs> the head region and the tail region are situated very close by. So the head will have more of influence of uh, the tail region also. But when this tiny planaria, when it grows, the tail region gets separated. So the influence of the head region on the tail becomes very weak. <coughs> the adults or fully grown planaria. <coughs> Excuse me. Same with the structures of the middle region of the body, like the pharynx also. So this process will affect the induction and regeneration of far away situated parts of the body. So in simple, when the animal is small, head part will influence regeneration of the tail part also. But when organism grows older or adult, head part fails its induction on the tail part or even on the pharyngeal region. So this is called as physiological isolation. This is under the control of again another group of specific genes uh, of the stem cells. We know there are adult stem cells called as um, neoblasts which influence the process of regeneration in planaria. These neoblasts are undifferentiated cell mass with the totipotency. They have special kind of genes that gets its um, activation to form the head uh, region first. So the brain gets differentiated in the anterior region then follows the uh, differentiation of middle piece and the posterior part. We know that the neoblasts have high power of cell division by mitosis at the site of uh, injury in order to uh, form the regeneration blastema regeneration bud. This blastema forms a head structure like the 
eyes and brain structures, etc. The same neoblast will transform into somatic or body cells or reproductive cells or geminal cells of the body. So all the parts like the head, pharynx, flame cells, nerve cells, uh, etc. gets formed at the posterior side. The influence of induction is seen for the organs that need to be developed at the injury site. Parallelly, there is a prevention of repetition of the developed parts at the injury site. So induction and inhibition both simultaneously works here. So otherwise, the regeneration process would result in abnormal individuals such as a heteromorph, such what we have learned, planaria having many number of heads. So down is the picture where heteromorph individuals are seen due to the abnormal induction and inhibition process. We already have dis uh, uh, discussed the types of neoblasts and their corresponding genes. We have neoblasts are of two types, zeta cells and sigma cells. Neoblasts of zeta cells will form the wound healing epidermis. And neoblasts of sigma cell types will form um, the structures which we call it as adult cell differentiation structures like uh, eyes, flame cells, reproductive cells, auricles, etc. The sigma cell types have active genes in them like WNT, beta catenin. Uh, erg genes, notum genes, etc. So, as we have understood earlier, of all this, notum genes and erg genes play a very important role to control the formation of head. So, notum genes will activate the head formation. It is one of the genes that belongs to APC family. <coughs> Students remember APC stands for Adenomatous poly uh, Polypopsis coli. It's a protein that shows a negative control on the beta catenin cycle. Otherwise, it is related to, it's a friend of notum and erg gene. Uh, enemy of WNT and catenin genes. So, APC gene family is against uh, WNT and beta catenin, that is posterior site formation. So, it influences the genes of the rest of the body parts. Hence, notum gene and APC gene family, otherwise, is uh, generally called as organizer gene. Why it is called organizer gene? Because this will first differentiate the brain uh, structure to form, then follows and influences the formation of the rest of the body parts at the middle region and the posterior region. So the boss of um, a head formation is under the control of the genes, which we call it as organizer gene. Example is your notum gene of APC gene family. So uh, the induction is so strong that if you could transplant the notum genes and the erg genes to the posterior side, even posterior side will form uh, one more head. So a single planaria will have two heads at the opposite sides. Erg genes will activate auricles of planaria. Oracles again related to the head region students. It also helps in the differentiation of brain structure. We also know that WNT and beta catenin genes will induce the posterior body part differentiation. So WNT and notum genes are 
um, uh, antagonistic genes. They show opposite actions. So picture down indicates it's so. You can find notum genes dependent on the beta catenin to form the WNT and help in the formation of um, neoblasts. So, uh, notum gene influences related to the WNT genes also uh, that helps in the formation of the brain. Students, we know that the uh, head formation is most active process which is under the control of set of genes like notum genes, APC gene family, etc. So, with this we are completing the concept of dominance of head part in the regeneration process. Now, we shall quickly run through the MCQs to test how much we have learned in the uh, concept of regeneration. Ability to give rise to new individual entity from the body part is regeneration. Answer this C. So that's the definition of regeneration also. The repair of cell division, sorry, the repair by cell division in the damaged tissue, when the tissue gets damaged from which the regeneration process takes place, is epimorphosis regeneration. Again, definition for epimorphosis. So, regeneration of a limb or a tail is an example of which of the type of um, regeneration here. So, it refers to epimorphosis again. Marfil axis relates to the nudes. 